My name is Ed Baker. I'm the YouTube matchmaker. November 28th is a Monday, 6.42 p.m. Just coming off the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. And I hope yours was better than mine. I've been very, very sick. I had to call 911 on Friday for myself, which is unfortunately the last two, three years become. Before that, I'd never called 911 in my life for myself. And I've probably had to do it four times now in the last couple of years, two, three years. I had, um, I thought I had maybe food poisoning. Kind of fit the mold of when I have had it in the past. But it was worse in some respects and not as bad in others. It was a little different. I don't want to get too graphic on here, but it was um, scary. And so anyway, I just had them come because I live alone. It's very scary living alone um, when you're sick. And for a lot of the years when I get sick, my biggest help was having a cat, having Titan to, uh, you know, help doctor me up. When I was a little kid, I had a cat named Wilma that I would call Nurse Wilma because I was sick a lot. And uh, she would always be there by my side in bed with me there. And, and uh, you know, those are, you know, things that are extremely helpful for healing and feeling better. And, you know, Titan, I still had to get up and feed him. And I, you know, and for the first time in my life today, I thought about getting a dog for the first time ever. Just because I've always avoided dogs. I've always been a cat person, but I've always avoided dogs because I don't want to go outside. I don't want to have to take them for a walk. I don't want to have to clean up after them. And I'll never get a dog, <laughs> but uh, it's it crossed my mind today. I saw a dog that I feel very sorry for. This owner's a fucking moron. Amazing dog, cute dog. Really wanted to just fucking half off or take it off the guy's hands, but in any event. It uh, made me think about it just because you are required to move. You're required to, you need to do things to help uh, whatever that pet's needs are. And in that case, going outside and all that stuff. I can't afford an animal. I also would like to have the freedom to be able to travel and go where I want for as long as I want. Right now, financially, I can't do that, but I have all the time in the world. And I don't have to be home to feed Titan, you know, because he died in March. But but he is missed. And uh, when I'm sick, and the holidays, too, are a really hard time for me anyway. Um, they used to be so amazing growing up. And now all those people that I shared that with are dead. Um and it just can make for a very depressing time. My grandma died on Thanksgiving Day in 2016, and she was, uh, my mom was in April of 2011, and my dad, January 2009. And even the couple of years before my dad died, Christmas and the holidays really were kind of taking a turn. Um, they really taken a turn years before, I guess, you know, we just didn't have much money and it just wasn't as, uh, fun, I guess. And just, you know, everybody has their reason for the season and all that stuff. But for our family growing up, it was, uh, spoiling one another on that day, just getting them everything that you thought that they would want and need. And when there was money to do it, you know, those were pretty amazing Christmases. 
Um, I get really sad now when I look back and I've had a lot of guilt over the years of all the crap I got that, you know, as an only child and, and all that stuff. But what I get sad about now is just how poor my family was. I just wish that I could, you know, give my mom a bunch of money to go out and buy for the people she wants to buy for. Some of it back to me, some of it to her mom, my grandma, some of it to my dad, her husband, and the cats, and any friends or whatever. But, you know, those, it was just looking back on just how, you know, we made a very little amount of money stretch to have presents at all and, and a dinner and all that. But it was, um, but anyway, Thanksgiving, you know, I've never really thought of the date of when my grandma died. I'd never looked. I just always said it was Thanksgiving and that's on a Thursday. So the date changes. So just every Thanksgiving, I just kind of associate that with um, my grandma passing away very early that morning. And it was known for a couple of days that she was going to die very soon. But uh wasn't like it was a surprise, but it just happens that that is the anniversary of it. And it was a surprise before, not too long before that. But she was 95. But, you know, when somebody lives that long and they always bounce back and, you know, uh, I don't know. But that was it. Um but what I noticed this year was the first time I looked back at a 2016 calendar and I found that the 24th was the date that my grandma died on Thanksgiving. And this year was the first Thanksgiving since then that has been on that same date. And so I think that affected me a little bit, but that had nothing to do with, well, I don't know. I, I don't know that it had nothing to do with some of the health things I've got going on. Um, there's, you know, some digestive issues. There's, uh, I have an acid reflux issue that I have to take a medicine for every morning. I used to take morning and night. Um, and then they switched me from that medication to a different one. And either one of a number of things is going on. Um, I'm definitely having acid reflux issues, which is very scary when you wake up choking and choking on your vomit, basically, uh, that's been pushed up because of that. And, um, and it, it hurts your throat. I mean, it just, it's hard to explain, but it, it feels like a scab getting ripped off in your throat like and then it's like raw feeling and it i mean it i'm not doing it justice it um the taste the um the feel the you know all those things um it's very uncomfortable uh so either my medication has stopped working effectively Or something is going on in my stomach where maybe some of the medications I've been taking to go with, of course, my diet the way it is, where I have never eaten a fruit or vegetable and all I eat is red meat and pizza and extra pepperoni on my pizza and tons of a two liter a day of soda pop. You know, obviously those things um, don't help the situation at all. But something has caused me a problem i got checked out on friday and and decided to not go to the hospital the paramedics came and checked me out i just felt like i needed to talk to somebody and needed to um, have a professional like do my vitals or whatever 
uh, make sure that those things, because it felt like I was going to pass out. It felt, you know, that's where I get really scared when I'm throwing up and stuff. And I, you know, and it goes on for a long time. I mean, it went on for many hours throughout the day. It was bad. It was very bad. Very bad. I just tried to let it run its course. I was very dehydrated at that point, and I didn't feel able to drink anything while going through a lot of that. But then I did. I drank uh, Red Gatorade, Red Powerade. And I, when I called 911, they asked me if there was blood in my vomit or diarrhea. And I said, I don't think so, no. And then I'm throwing up and this bright red, like fucking everywhere. And it momentarily scared me. Like anyone looking at it would say it was definitely blood. But it wasn't, I'm sure. I can hope. I'm pretty sure it was the power Gatorade that I had been drinking. But man, that you know, it just is what it is. Not pleasant. Um, I was supposed to meet somebody on on Saturday uh, who brings me bottles. If you're in Oregon, you get ten cents a bottle, and that's my only income. I don't have any checks that come in. I get a forty six dollar utility allowance is all that that I get in the form of money. And so I have a friend who brings me bottles that she collects for me. It's incredibly helpful. I don't know how often. Um I think we've only done it 3 times maybe now and that was today was one of those. One time I got 50 bucks out of it. You know, and I mean, again, when you're on a zero income, that's a uh, very helpful. So um, she goes out of her way to do that for me. Um, but I was supposed to meet her on Saturday and and um, get that, you know, bottles from her and put them into the bottle drop thing at Fred Meyer. And uh, I was just so sick, I couldn't do it. But we did reschedule for today, and we met today, and that was really good. Um, I uh, posted on Facebook my... I had a Facebook account that got banned by Facebook, and then I created a, another one. I've only got 20 people on it. Don't really use it hardly at all, but it's mostly for Messenger for a couple of my people that it's easiest to communicate with that way. And uh, a couple of people that I like to keep up on their craziness on, on their social media and whatever. But I did post that I was really sick and I was pretty scared about it that because I felt better Friday night and then I got really sick again later that night into Saturday morning. And I mean, just different times I would get to feeling really nauseated and really unwell. And when I've had food poisoning in the past, it was miserable, but then it was done. And this wasn't done and it's not done right now. Um, so I sent through my chart, uh, it's like a portal thing to communicate with your doctor and stuff. And I sent a message last night because I was going to call for Monday morning, but I was like, it's hard to get through on Monday mornings. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll just send this and then they'll call me. And that worked out really well. Um, so I got a phone call to schedule an appointment, but it's going to be in two weeks. And then I got a message back on my chart, giving me some, advice on what to do in the meantime what to try to avoid which is mostly everything i eat and drink um but you know whatever i can do right now to just kind of cool this when i was in third grade my stomach was um 
I was having a really bad stomach pain. And um, my mom would make me drink orange juice in the morning. And I would say, it's killing my stomach. And she'd say, no, it's not. Drink your orange juice. And then they took me to the doctor and I got an x-ray done on my stomach. And they said that I had an ulcer, which it's awfully young to get an ulcer. Now, I think they said a non-bleeding ulcer. In any event, I had to uh, have liquid Maalox before every meal. So at school, I would have to go a few minutes before lunch and get my medicine. But they said absolutely no orange juice. And my mom felt so bad. And honestly, that changed everything. She never made me eat or drink anything after that. And that's when I stopped eating vegetables <laughs> and fruit. Never touched it again. You know, soon after that. Maybe they encouraged me maybe to eat green beans or something. I remember having green beans. That was the only vegetable I, could, I would eat as a kid and whatever. So maybe in my teenage years, I was still eating maybe the occasional green beans. But I didn't... Um, I've never eaten any of them as an adult. 44 years old. So, you know, I've always told myself that my body would reject trying to add those things because my body doesn't know any of those things. And I I believe that to a, to a degree right now. Um, but I'm also open to the realities that some of the things that I eat are contributing to some of the problems that I'm having with my digestive issues and whatever else is going on. I'm worried that it might be an ulcer, which is humorous to worry about because that's what causes ulcers. But it just reminds me of what I was experiencing way back when I was in third grade. It could be something where something has completely torn up my fucking insides from the medicine that I take every day. Some of the medicines really, I mean, they didn't tell me not to, you know, they keep prescribing it. So, but, you know, some of those things are not great on your body to take for a long time. Um, so I know that if my acid reflux, if I go without that medicine, I'm fucked. I mean, I'll die probably. I, I, Nothing helps. Like I could go get may get a uh, Tums and Maalox, and it just works for about ten seconds, and I'm in misery. Um, so I feel like, at a minimum, this medication is not working right anymore. Um, so that's concerning, but. I can make some adjustments. I went to the store last night and got Pepto-Bismol Ultra, uh, very expensive. And I received a couple of very nice donations. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the right thing is to do to, to call them out by name or not. Um, I don't know if they want the attention, you know, that or that whatever. Uh, but those two people know who they are and... Thank you so much for the donations on or around Thanksgiving. Um, I ended up having to use some of that money to get medicine. <laughs> Wasn't uh, the most ideal thing, but I mean, it is what it is. So I needed it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, those people are the usual suspects. They're the people that um, they've helped me a lot. They're from the YouTube community. And, um, you know, there are people that are friends of the channel that uh, I've promoted and will continue to. But again, I just don't know how much to be specific about it. But thank you, thank you, thank you. And feel free to message me anytime and say, it's perfectly fine to drop my channel name and and uh, all that stuff when, when you're thanking me. But in any event. Um,
I, I mean, and then with the sickness, um, it's really elevated my anxiety and depression. Um, it's made me scared of, I mean, I'm always scared of death anyway, but it, um, and I, I don't enjoy life anymore without the people that I love. And so that's a challenge. Um, and it's been miserable as it is. Um, there's a lot that is difficult about this era for me. Um, not having the people that I, you know, was close to that have passed on not um just all the lost time the failures the losing my family home lo you know just a lot of stuff that has been um very painful i have a whole hell of a lot to be thankful for um i mean it's amazing the things i have to be thankful for having housing have, you know, in a lot of respects, I should just be loving life that I don't have to work. I don't have to, but I don't get any money to not work, but I do get a lot of stuff that would be very expensive if I was working. Housing, food, EBT food uh, benefits, insurance that covers everything pretty much. Um, 100%. All my medications, all my dental stuff. All, I had two root canals done for nothing, you know, and meanwhile, people that work their ass off are paying out of pocket thousands of dollars for this shit. Maybe they even have insurance and just isn't good insurance. You might be paying into this insurance that doesn't do shit. Um, so there's a lot to be very thankful for. I feel like I'm stuck a lot of the time. I feel like I've got a lot of beyond brilliant business ideas and I was always a very good manager. And I just have that mind, um, coaching, sports, um, st strategy, being strategic, personnel, um, recruiting people, and all those things, um, putting them in the best position to succeed and putting the people around them that can help them succeed and all those different things that go with that. That's going on in my mind still. 24 seven, but I don't have an outlet for it. And that's frustrating. But, you know, I just started getting very fearful that I was going to die and that whether I die soon or not, that it's not going to get a lot better or I'm not going to feel a lot better. Like I'm going to, I fear the way I was feeling on Friday and Saturday, that that's going to be my normal good days at some point. Um, and that's not good. That's, you know, you don't want to live like that. So it's been tough. Um, I posted that thing on Facebook and I was very thankful for the people that responded to it. I believe I had four or five different people respond to it. I think five. I think four there and one messaged me privately. And just the things they said um, was uh, things that I guess at the time I really needed to hear or have somebody say or whatever. Living alone is hard for me um, anymore. I, I always loved it. I always wanted to be living alone. I don't want to have roommates and, and all that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm a very good roommate. I'm an easy roommate to get along with. I keep to myself, you know, if we were in a two bedroom apartment, I rarely was in the living room or the kitchen or, you know, I stayed in my room just like I am here. But the difference just is that there was at least other energy. You could go out and sit down on the couch and talk to somebody for a little bit. You, you could know what they were doing. You could they have a friend over, you have a friend over, whatever the case, you have mutual friends. Um, and, you know, just there's other energy. People to laugh with, people to 
do something with a game or watch something together or whatever it is. And it's just very difficult to do that. You know, I mean, you can do things virtually. You can play games with people without seeing them. You can go on and watch the same things or whatever, but it's not the same as having someone right there with you physically. And um, I just think I'm at a really tough spot right now. I'm stuck. I can't keep living this way. My disability was denied. My appeal was denied. I'm not going to ever get disability for this. I've talked to a bunch of lawyers. They just say, I believe you that you're disabled. I believe that you should get disability. But I don't win those cases with people that are your age and that disability. And my psychiatrist says, even if I was bipolar, which they say I'm not, that even that wouldn't count because it's classified as treatable, as are all my other, um, my depression, my anxiety, and all that is categorized as treatable, even though it's went on forever and it doesn't seem to get better. Some things are very circumstantial. Money is a big part of it. And so I'm very thankful for the donations. I'm very thankful for you know, the help in that kind of thing. I will say that no matter how much money I have, I am hurting without my mom, my dad, my grandma, my friend that I coach baseball with for 13 years, Larry, who's passed on. My friend Cliff, who I was friends with for about 20 years. You know, my cat, who I had for almost 18 years that died in March, Titan. My grandma lived to be 95. She was the most peaceful person I've ever met. And I could go to her place, her assisted living, and hang out, which I did on a, at least once a week, almost every Sunday. Sometimes I'd go another day. And it was just a place where I could... It was just amazing. It felt so peaceful. My grandma outlived everybody. She outlived her own daughter. She outlived, uh, she, that was her only child. And I was my mom's only child. So I was my grandma's only grandchild. And, you know, she outlived everybody. She lived to be 95, so she outlived her grandparents, her parents, her uncles and aunts. And I think she had three sisters that I, I think had all died. And um, what's interesting, though, about my grandma, she was the most... She never swore. She never she never said anything bad about anybody. She was always so positive. And what was amazing is that she had, I'm sure, wonderful memories of all those people that she loved and missed and was without. She didn't have, she was a hoarder. I'm a hoarder. She didn't have anything of theirs. Maybe there's a the occasional picture somewhere like a small picture in a drawer, but not like I have. She didn't have totes of their shit. She didn't have any keepsakes of theirs. She didn't keep their jewelry. She didn't keep their stuffed animal or whatever the fuck, you know, but she didn't need that to, to live. And, uh, but you know, part of that is she had me, <laughs> you know, or she had others that, she loved me so much and you know we were best friends and i know that i did things on multiple occasions that literally saved her life kept her alive and kept her going and that kind of thing and she went on to live many more years
So I'm just saying I need a change. I need to have more people physically in my life. My best friends that I would ever see have moved away or grown tired of me or whatever. Most of them just have moved out of state or just are too far away to go be with, spend time with. I really didn't want to be alone the last few nights. Um, right now I'm feeling better, but it comes and goes. I'm trying to take a little bit better care of myself with what I'm eating and drinking today. Not doing a perfect job with it, but better. I couldn't eat at all for a while. And right now it seems that I'm keeping things down. I still have stomach pain. I still have the acid reflux a little bit. So I just want to stay on top of that. I got, like I said, the medication that I bought. But, uh, Being alone is scary on a lot of levels. What if I couldn't unlock the door? What if I couldn't? Um, and the fire department had to break down a door here. It took a long time. They were banging that fucking thing, banging, and banging, and banging. It was sh like practically shaking my apartment. Like I was like, what the fuck is that? And I went outside and looked. And here the fire department there is banging knocking in the fucking lock or whatever to get in and rescue a guy. And I don't know if he died or not. He looked like he was about dead, but he wasn't. But, you know, I try to carry my phone with me wherever I go. I didn't always do that. But like, if I go to the bathroom, if I go, I try to have my phone with me. I don't like leaving my door unlocked. But at times I do because I want, if I can't get to the fucking door to unlock it, I want to be able to get, let medical people be able to get to me as quick as possible. But, you know, it's a lot better if you just have someone here. The other thing is I need to change the scenery and, and I'm stuck in the apartment that I'm in. I'm very thankful for it. I overcame homelessness to have a place. But I've been here for 10 years. And so thankful for it. 30% of my income is my rent, so nothing is nothing. Living downtown Portland, pros and cons, but you either have to be extremely poor or extremely well off to live in downtown Portland. And in my case, I'm extremely poor. But again, I get these things that other people work very hard for. But I wish I could work and do my, there's a lot of work I don't want to do. But the work that I would like to be doing, like coaching, um, in management, that kind of thing, I wish that I was doing because I, I'm a workaholic when I can work. Um, to a fault, for sure. I don't mind putting in 70-hour weeks on a salary. If, if you know, it's, I just enjoy the, all that stuff. It's like a high for me, the, um, the management, all the things I said earlier. Like if somebody was opening a sports bar or was opening any retail business or any business, call center, which I had a lot of background in managing, you know, and they wanted somebody to manage it. You know, I'm the guy. And I, I wish I could find that person who knows me, believes in me. That person that remembers when I was alive back in 2001, when I was alive pre 9 11, before a lot of that shit went away that I used to manage. But the people that knew me then, if they were in a position where they were like, hey, this is the guy, 100% trust him to run this, I would love it. Like if, if my phone rang right now and somebody said that to me, you know, let's talk, let's go, let's get started. 
but I need to get to a point where I have a place to go that I can be at peace and away from home and like go for like a week. I wish I had people that would be able to take me in like that. I wish people were like, if you can get to me, you can stay for a week or whatever, you know? Um, I just wish like four times a year that I would not go to the same place necessarily, but go somewhere for three nights or a week or whatever, somewhere around water, somewhere around um, a lake or an ocean, or just somewhere where there's just peace in the air and you can just breathe and you can look out and see something other than graffiti and needles and shit and bums and graffiti and all this bullshit that is down here in downtown Portland. And here, even for me to go anywhere, you got to go through all that to get there and come back through all that shit to get home. If I go take a bus somewhere. So I'm going to leave this here because I'm afraid my time will run out and then it corrupts the file and all this will be a waste. And I hate to try to repeat all this shit. So uh, thank you guys so much. If you're a praying person, please keep me in your prayers. I need a lot of prayers. Um, I need help. I don't know how to get the help I need. I'm in counseling. I've got a psychiatrist. I'm in group counseling for grief. I have some people that check on me, call me. They don't live near me, but they call and check on me every day, most every day. And if I don't hear from them at all for a day, it's a worse day for me. So those just occasional messages, letting me know that in some way I'm relevant, you know, um, because a lot of times I sit in this room and I go, what's the difference if I'm alive or dead? Because they're, I just feel like I'm just taking up a space, you know, in the world, but not living. And um, I don't know, it's it's scary because it just feels like like I'm hitting a point where it's getting harder and harder to bounce back from. Like I was in bed for so long, for so many, like a couple of years pretty much, where I didn't really go outside because of depression and whatever. And, and just being broke and nothing to do and whatever. And, um, I then was so weak that I ended up getting referred to, um, physical therapy and that I really struggled with. I did horrible at it. And my grandma in her nineties was doing physical therapy once in a while and would bounce back. And I'm in my early 40s and having this ridiculous trouble. And it just feels like, it feels hopeless. It feels like I'm, I'm not going to make it. It feels like the goals that I've had in life are obsolete or irrelevant. The people I wanted to win for are dead, which in and of itself, should be a reason to keep trying to win because they sacrificed for me to give me that chance. So I feel a lot of guilt, a lot of really bad that, about my situation. I'm also $200,000 in debt and have nothing um, to show for that. I have my driver's license suspended because my child support is $50,000 in arrears. I have a million problems. And I come off to a lot of people as very selfish. And I can understand that. But I've always felt that I'm selfishly unselfish because ultimately I want to succeed to help other people and to keep the memory of my parents alive and things of that nature. I'd like to start a nonprofit in their honor and related to cats. So yeah, I'm going to drop it here, but I hope to do these again soon. It does... Uh, help me. So thank you guys. Appreciate you.